Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mayor Randy Christmas of Miami, Florida. The film you're about to see is a startling expose based on fact. It concerns a vicious attempt by organized crime to take over the entire state of Florida. But for the alert and courageous work of Florida's law enforcement agencies and the integrity of its governmental administrations, this threat might have been made good. I take this opportunity to issue a warning to the people of every state in the nation. It could happen in your state. We are dedicated here in Florida to the belief that it will never again happen to us. Thank you. You're in a plane flying over the state of Florida. You're a visitor, soaring over such cities as Tallahassee, the state capital, St. Augustine, Ocala, Jacksonville, Tampa, Titusville. You are too high to see what has happened to Florida, to see that it has become the fastest growing state in the nation, that its population is more than five million in the tourist season. Perhaps you don't care about statistics. All you're interested in is the end of the line. For the end of the line is Miami. And that's where most of Florida's fun, romance, adventure, and excitement are waiting. You're not interested in the millions of others who are flocking into the state on planes, buses, trains, and boats. All you want to do is forget your troubles. But where there are millions of people, there are billions of dollars. And there are too many men who would do anything for that kind of money. Yes, you should have thought about those statistics. They might have saved your life. Sunday afternoon, quiet, lazy. It's two months since 41 people died in the crash of the transport plane. Most people have forgotten it. It was an accident, the investigators said, but it doesn't do much good to brood about tragedy. But these people haven't forgotten. The passenger in seat 36 on the death plane was a vital statistic to them. They have no intention of ever forgetting. I grab the first plane in the morning for the Phantom. You make sure you keep in touch with me twice a day. This job shouldn't take too long. A Sunday afternoon, serene, placid, filled with sun and brightness. A day of rest or fun. A day for those who don't care too much about tomorrow. A day for the fortunate, for the men with big plans for tomorrow. Hey, I've listened to every one of your confounded musical soirees. Attended your dinners, guzzled your liquor, wallowed in your banquets. Played cards with you, and generally was buddy-buddy. Mm. Ever since you came to Florida eight months ago. Now, this just proves one point to me, that you want something. Now, what is it? Must somebody always want something from me? Yes. Can't get it anywhere else. What's a lobbyist for? I do favors for people. I know. I'm used to it, and I like it. <laughs> I'm the I'm the general store, the biggest one in the state. <laughs> I've seen him play it cozy and close to the vest, but none like you. Now, are you going to tell me what you want, or are you going to keep me in suspense? I don't think you can deliver. No? Not as much as I want. <laughs> All right. I'm being baited. You name it. Florida has become one of the richest states in the country. At the next election, I want the uh, people to vote for legalized gambling. I want to make Miami the Las Vegas of the East. Hmm? 
Also, this is a day for those who can only worry about today. The ones who aren't fooled by a quiet Sunday afternoon. The ones who know that at any moment, a fuse could be lighted to blow it into a hell of violence and death. How do all those people on the beach find the energy to knock themselves out on a day like this? Well, they can't waste time. Most of them only have two weeks to either get healthy or get a heart attack. You'd think they had the choice. If I was out under one of those umbrellas, even those bathing suits passing by wouldn't keep me awake. Some of the boys say you've been thinking of retiring to one of those umbrellas permanently. Me? I'd go crazy. What does a guy do who has nothing to do? See the world? I can see the world out that window. You're just talking like the other boys. Well, I just wanted to hear you say it. They put me in your spot, and I don't want it. Maybe you're smart. And smart. He's got it all figured out. Two more years I retire, 20 years of being a cop is enough. I get a pension, I'll only be 41, and I find something safe and sane to grab hold of. Well, you managed to stay alive 18 years. 18 years made me a lieutenant in homicide. 35 years got you a captaincy. What have we got to show for it? We're still alive, that's all. Now I'll play it the way Ann wants. Two more years, I'll do my job without trying to be a hero or getting any medals. Four o'clock already? Yeah, my shift's up. You gonna see Ann? Maybe taking a movie. Wait a minute. Stevie said he wanted some pencils. For a five-year-old, this kid uses up more pencils. Maybe he's writing his life story. Yeah. <laughs> Elkins. All right, I'll take it. Yes, ma'am. This is police headquarters. Now, what? You just saw a murder committed? A man killed another man with a knife? In the hotel right across the street from you? Yes, Mrs. Henderson. Now, where did you see this killing? The Cromwell. 20th and Collins. All right, we take care of it right away. All I want to know is why you're making me sharpen all these pencils at once. If I don't, you'll start kissing Mom, and we won't be able to talk. Oh, well, if you had a girl as pretty as your mom... Uh-uh. Would... Uh, be careful, Steve. He's trying to trap you. Heck, I know it. Uncle Bart, when are you going to be my father? <clears throat> uh, young man, would you kindly go in and wash up for dinner? Nobody ever answers anything. <laughs> mm. Now, I'm not going to muss your lipstick. Yeah. You know, he's right. Nobody answers any questions around here. When are you going to marry me? Not until you get off the, the force. Yes, I know. Bart, I can't take a chance on that happening to Stevie again. I know that was rough on the boy, but half the fellows on the force are married and have kids. It's, it's... All I know is Steve's father was a policeman and he was killed. I saw what that did to Stevie. Hello. Oh. Yes, he is. It's your office. If they think I'm going to pass up your dinner again, hello, Scott, yeah. Hmm? My God. How did that? just been killed. No. 
He and another guy knifed. I... Yes, a quiet Miami Sunday afternoon did explode into a hell of violence and death. And its first victims were Captain Harry Elkins, who had spent 35 years in the Miami Police Department, and a man named Joey Hodges. of a struggle, Chief. No. Killer was probably hidden. I think he saw him. Harry never did. He never knew what hit him. Had to bear out what that Henderson woman said. Saw a couple guys start a fight and then kill him. Quick job. Talk to the witness who saw it from her window across the street. She was too far away to give us a description. Who's this other one? A guy named Joe Hodges. Just moved into this apartment about five hours ago. His, uh, his wife got away. Wife? Our manager here said he saw her go up, then come tearing down again immediately. He scared stiff. She grabbed a cab. Checking the cab company, huh? Yeah, she's Stevenson. I've already sent Hodges' prints into the lab for checking. Bart, I know how close you and Harry were. He was too old. Why did he come up here alone? A younger man might have been able to handle it. You better run things until we get a permanent captaincy for you. Uh, Chief, I... Yes? Harry knew how I felt about running the office. I... Just how did you feel? through on the fingerprints. The fuse has been lit on this quiet Sunday afternoon. The explosion can take place anywhere, anytime. Oh, yes, we met before. Yes. Yes. Mr. Sheridan, Mr. Pell to see you, sir. He's in the library. Um, excuse me, everybody. I'll be back right away. His wife got away. Huh? Now, I got Hodges all right, but his wife wasn't there, so I decided to wait. Instead, a cop showed up. Police? There must have been a tip-off somewhere. Did you see him? I killed him before he could. You? Yep. I suppose there's nothing else you could do. Nothing. It'll be a big investigation. You'll never let it drop when a policeman's killed. It's hard as well. She came back up there just as I got through with the cop. I don't think she saw my face. You let her get away? I couldn't follow her. I couldn't take the chance. Now, look, Ray, there's a lot of things I'll do for because you. Because you have to. Now, you can't let this woman talk. She's got to be found. She may be a long way from here. Right now. You go back to the hotel. Wait till I get in touch with you. Don't leave your room. Maybe there's a way of finding out quickly. says the prints are the same, all right. Joey Hodges, bodyguard for Louis Ascot, ex-gunsel for a Cleveland mob. Poor Harry.
Barry sure walked into something. Somebody sure knew what Hodges was up to. Stevenson said this Hodges woman took a cab to the airport, then bought a ticket for Havana. She must be with Louie Ascot right now. Why don't I go after her? Take one of the men with you. Well, the Havana police will give me all the help I need. I'll call them before I leave. All right. Yeah. Yeah, he's here, Cleveland. Hello. Uh, hello, Oliver. Yes, all the boys here feel pretty bad about it. No, nothing concrete. We know there's a woman involved, yes. Havana, eh? Huh? Oh, oh yes, I uh, heard about Harry from a friend of mine who happened to be passing by at the time. Yeah. Well, you know, if there's anything I can do for you, you can count on me. Yes, it's terrible. Mm. Well, all right, Charlie. Uh, say hello to Ethel for me, will you? I'll do that. See you soon, Oliver. News gets around fast. I guess there's very little that happens in this state that Oliver Tubbs doesn't know about. Now you make your arrangements for Havana. Well, Sedoya of the Havana Force will be notified to put a check on Lava Hodges tonight. I'll take the first morning plane. Okay. See you later, Bob. I said I'd go along with you on this legal gambling bill of yours, right? Cut? Yes, please. No doubt about it. Any man who turned down a million dollar fee would be a fit subject for a psychiatrist. <laughs> Thank you. And perhaps it's the thought of the million dollars that should stop me from asking questions. Eh? But I still want to know what's so important to you about the Elkins Hodges murder. Important? Oh, nothing. But before I retired in my days as a criminal lawyer up north, I got to know the workings of the criminal mind. In a pure clinical way, you understand. I also got to know the mobs, the things they want, the things for which they'll commit crimes. I know about this Hodges and his wife. He used to be a dealer in a Midwest gambling combine at one time. He merely wanted to test my own ingenuity. I guess the wife would try and find the man her husband was working for at the time, uh, Louis Ascot. And Ascot's in Havana now. So the information you got from the police merely confirmed my guess, that's all. I'm not often wrong about the moves they make. It's a fascinating study. Well, I can't say I share your enthusiasm. Uh, tell me, you want to do things my own way uh, about this gambling bill of yours? No, Oliver. You'll do them my way. All right, show me to I want a committee formed of the names on this list be the most influential committee in the state, and it'll throw all its weight behind the bill. Henry Tremont, the contractor, Marshall Endicott, department store man, Eric Tallman, oil, John Hobart and Citrus, Frank Meany, Dan Spanner, Bob Lucker. Wait a minute, these are the most important men in the state. You expect me to get all of those? I don't expect anything or anybody to stand in my way. Remember that, Oliver. It's very necessary. In the brief moment that it takes to kill a man, Lila Hodges had become the central figure of the most fantastic and scandalous plan for crime in the history of Florida. The girl hoped to find refuge in Havana, Cuba, but there wasn't a country in the world that could guarantee her safety now. Mr. Asker. At the pool with Pierre, Senorita Hodges. Ask him to come in, please. You know what I thought of Joey, Lila. First Georgie Evans on that plane, not Joey. Sheridan's gonna pay through the teeth for this. Nobody's been able to hang anything on him yet. 
Maybe we'll go back to like it was in the old days, Lila. We don't wait for the law to do our job for oh, us. Oh, don't be a fool, Louie. A cop was killed in Miami, too. Place is too hot to try something. Right now, I'm just worried about my own neck. The killers didn't miss me by Your much. Your nerves are shot. They baby. can't let me run around loose. They'll think I know too shot. much. Your nerves are shot. You're safe. They'll chase me here and they'll You're find You're safe. They can't find you in this place. You know I that. I know it. Yes, I know. Nobody followed you here. Oh, no. I got into town yesterday. I checked in and out of three different hotels, two restaurants, a nightclub, and the movie theater. Nobody could tell me through that. Nobody. Good. I'm going to miss Joey. You got yeah. no worries, not for the rest of your life. Mm. Now you get into your bathing suit, Aunt Lila, and you join the people at the pool. Yeah. And maybe later we talk about your future, huh? Joey isn't even cold yet. Yeah, sure, I know. I'm jumping the gun. When a guy gets a little older, he likes to make every day count. Take your drink, honey. Yeah. I'll wait for you at the pool. Okay. Her as best he could, but she is very smart. Uh, well, that figures, Lieutenant Sadar. She's probably taking a roundabout route to Ascot. I have a car for you, as you asked. Perhaps you better take a couple of my men with you. No, that won't be necessary. But if I don't show up by six, come after me, will you? That's okay. Can I hire a car around here? Si, senor. Outside the terminal to the right. Thanks. Talk to the cop, baby. I don't have any choice. He's got something in his head. I gotta find out what. Stay here. Don't come in the house. Okay, send him in. Yeah. I was born yesterday, Scott. If I didn't know you better, I'd think you're trying to con me into a payoff. Then you know I'm leveling. Get your clothes, Louie. I'm taking you back to the murder of Harry Elkins and Joey Hodges. You look cracked. Joey was like my own kid. Oh, now that he's gone, you're going to adopt little Lila. Hmm? You can't make that stick. No, what is she doing here? You think a jury wouldn't believe you got rid of him to get her? You want something. You're pressuring me. You know I had nothing to do with those killings. Did Lila get a good look at the guy who did the knifing? She had to get out of there fast. She isn't sure she could identify him or not. What was she and Joey doing in my house? They went there to do some shopping before joining me down here. <laughs> and some guy bumped him off because he was shopping in the wrong store. How do I know it? The reason was you get all kinds of crackpots in the tourist season. Maybe the guy was off his rocker or something. Okay, Louie. Maybe Lila will do better with the answers. I'm taking her back as a witness, back to Miami. Well, that's what you want. That's why you were pressuring me. Listen to me, Scott. 
You take her back to Miami, that killer's gonna get another crack at her. Maybe next time she won't be so lucky, maybe she winds up dead. They wanna kill her that bad, they can do it. No, here. no, not oh, here. Yeah. Here she's safe. I don't want a thing to happen to her. Love comes to Andy Ascot. Hmm? <laughs> the glass is empty. Uh, another drink. happen not here you still think she'd be safer here than with the police what's he mean he wants you to go to miami and answer some questions lila maybe you should go what kind of double cross easy baby i think it'll be all right you haven't done anything wrong you have nothing to be afraid of just maybe some nut with a gun you answer some questions for the police they catch this maniac and you come back to louis all free and clear we go on about our business huh all right louis I don't know very much, but I'll tell the police. Okay, Lieutenant. The sooner we get out of Havana, the safer I'll feel. One thing you remember, Scott, you got to give her protection. Anything goes wrong, I'm taking it out of your hide. What about your clothes? They're upstairs. Go and get them. Don't try anything funny. Havana police are just looking for a shape like yours to uh, whistle at. You shouldn't talk like that to Lila Scott. You just stay out of Miami, Ascot. The way you feel about her could still give us a motive for Joey's death. The airport's the other way. That's right. Look, Scott, you're supposed to get me out of Havana in a hurry. Or have you forgotten that a guy with a gun's looking for me? Relax. You're going to spend the night at my hotel. Why, you cheap cop, if you think you can get me... I said relax. Louis will kill you. He won't let you get away with it. We'll give him his chance. Mr. and Mrs. Bart Scott. Louie's gonna love that on the hotel register. Lila, you're gonna get more attention than a wife. I'm not gonna let you out of my sight. So it's not me. You're up to something. That's using the old head. Well, what do we do? Sit right here in this room until morning? I don't know. I'm not even sure you're gonna live till morning. What's that supposed to mean? I like Havana. Lots of nice spots to go to. You and I could do it up big. I'm not moving out of this room. We don't know where the killer is. We don't know he won't see me. Well, that's a chance we'll have to take. We'll have to take? It's my neck, not yours. Now listen to me, Scott. You'll have to drag me out of this room screaming. I'll yell so loud they'll hear me clear back in Miami. Ready to make a deal? What kind of a deal? Tell me why Joey was killed and we'll be on the next plane to Miami. How could I know? I wasn't even with him at the time. Okay, so we do the town tonight. And if you haven't told me by morning, maybe Louie will. And if Louie doesn't kill you, maybe I will. <laughs> I 
claro, no la hagas daño. Let's go back. Ready to talk? I've told you I don't know anything. How much can you do to me? My nerves feel as if they're coming through my skin. Now, you know, this can go on night after night. I don't mind. I'm having a good time. Taxpayers are picking up the check. What you got instead of blood, Scott? Embalming fluid? Harry Elkins had real blood. What good did it do him? going to ask her. That's where you'll get yours. I thought they went to Miami. Which hospital you want to go to? I don't like double crosses, Scott. You said you'd get Lila off the island and give her protection. I uh, changed my mind. Just like that? In Cuba, you're not a cop. Maybe you forgot. Oh, no, I didn't forget. That's why I asked some friends to meet me here. Senor Ascot, your friend George Evans operated in Havana for a long time without any trouble. Perhaps you should have learned a few things from him. Well, what's the pitch this time? I was worried about your memory, Louis. I, I think it's slipping. My office is in the back. Mm. Senor Escott, the tourist commission here wants everyone to think the Cuban climate is very helpful. We stay here with Lieutenant Scott to make sure he enjoys that good health. How long are you going to be a wise guy, Scott? I play ball with you, have a night. Louie, I'm going to give you a chance to show Lila how much she really means to you. Well, maybe I don't need you for that. Oh, yes, you do, you do. I'm practically the best man. <laughs> Louie, you know where she and I have been all night? Dancing, eating, drinking, every spot in town. You did that? Knowing that trigger happy killer's in town? He thinks you're going to tell him why Joey was killed. He's not going to take me out of Havana till he knows. Well, you stinking cop. It's no I use, Louie. I... I've called him everything already. You think this is playing rough? Why, I could hang you up by your thumbs. Or her, or anyone else that's necessary. It would help me find out who killed Harry Hawkins. Well, Louie, you gonna tell me what I wanna know? Or does your girlfriend still make like a clay pigeon? All I know is I couldn't stand another 24 hours in Havana. I didn't tell him anything. If you want to, it's up to you. Joey was in Miami because a new mob is gonna take over your state. You expect me to swallow that? You ever hear of a guy named Raymond Sheridan? Sheridan? Criminal lawyer? Well, he's your boy. Yeah. He's gonna push legalized gambling through in the next election. Why didn't you tell me before? Two men were killed. Georgie Evans and Joey. I was ready to move in, Scott. I was ready to move in and turn Florida into a battlefield if I had to. Evans and Joey were sent out here to lay the groundwork, huh? If we could have got rid of Sheridan without getting rough, we'd have tried it. Sheridan didn't wait. Killed my men. For your information, Evans was on that plane that blew up a couple of months back. <laughs> Harry walked into that, huh? It's been happening right under your nose. Business has fallen off in Reno, Vegas, and here. We couldn't stand the competition of another state opening up. You see how it is, Scott? It's either Sheridan or it's us.
Now, there's got to be more to it than that. Somebody's in this with Sheridan. He couldn't do this alone. He has millions to spend, the many needs he'll buy. I'm guessing one of them will be that lobby guy, Oliver Tubbs. Tubbs? You see, you happen to be a pretty square guy, Scott. But Sheridan's buying the ones who aren't so square, and maybe they're more Sheridan's kind. If you want my advice, you'll leave your guns and mothballs. You've been a good boy a long time, Louie. It's paid off. Don't spoil it. Well, you do it your way. You mess it up. I forget the mothballs, and I go looking for Sheridan myself. Is that all of it? That's all I know. Well, Lila, you and I can be on our way to Miami tomorrow morning. You're more valuable now than ever. You help me stop Sheridan. I don't know. Maybe the governor will pin a medal on him. Just forget the medal, son, Scott. Make sure you send it back to me in one piece. <laughs> sick a while, but she'll recover. You had it right. The lab boys found traces of strychnine in one of the coffee cups on the plane. Yeah, if what you tell me about Sheridan is true, this Lila Hodges is just a drop in a bucket, especially with men like Oliver Tubbs throwing it with him. Well, we're going to need a chief. There are two things we've got to do. We've got to find the murderer so that Lila can identify him and then tie the murderer in with Sheridan. You haven't seen the morning papers. Tubbs came out publicly demanding a cleanup of the state. <laughs> Down with vice, gambling, crooked politics, the works. Propaganda started already, huh? Yeah. This is the best administration the state's ever had. Yeah, but by election time, he'll have convinced the voters that we're all a bunch of crooks. We've got to prove Sheridan's the murderer. Now, our best wedge is Lila Hodges. We've got to keep her alive. And the best guarantee of that is to make Sheridan think she's dead. What would that get us? Well, Sheridan can't be sure how much Lila knows. If he thinks she's alive, he'll walk on glass. If he thinks she's dead, he'll open up. That's what we want. Well, how would you handle it? I don't know. I don't know. Let it come from you. Give it to the papers that Lila Hodges died this morning sometime after being admitted to the hospital. It could backfire. I know. I know. You've got more to lose than I have. You got a place to hide her until we need her? I think so. All right. Move her out of the hospital when you can. I'll arrange for the death certificate and the newspapers. Right. Oh, Bart. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to recommend you now for that permanent captain spot? Well, you see whether you have to make out a death certificate for me first. Well, there's Endicott, Tallman, Hobart, Spanner, Meany, and Lucker. They're all with me 100%. Fine. What about Allenson, Doby, and Jensen? Tell me down cold. Oh. Perhaps they need a different kind of persuasion. What? I have something that may help you. Come. Hmm. This is a file on Victor Jensen. File? Mm-hmm. Look it through. Now, this is fantastic. Where did you get this information? Impressive, isn't it? Who would have believed such things of the righteous Victor Jensen, powerful civic and society leader? Yes, but is it all true? Mr. Jensen is a very discreet gentleman. Somehow he's managed to hide the crimes of his youth. 
I'd say he'd hidden them from everybody in the world except two people, his wife and Raymond Sheridan. And now, of course, you. Well, what about the other files? All charming little exposés. Hmm. There's even one in the name of Oliver Turks. Where's you that file? Don't bother. It's complete. You know, I'm very thorough if the stakes are high enough. But uh, you're my friend. Instead of forcing you to do it, I want to pay a million dollar fee. That should assure you of my good intentions. I mean, how long have you had these files? Everything was prepared before I moved to Florida. Oh. So you're going to blackmail Jensen into lending his name to this committee? No, Oliver, I'm not. You are. Oh, but this is hideous. All these people are my friends. All you're going to do is to give them a chance to make a lot of money. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. I can assure them of it. I shall be running the Gambling License Commission, and only our friends will have licenses to operate. No gangsters, Oliver. Just a very clubby group of gentlemen. So, here are the files on uh, Allenson and Doby. Talk to them and, uh, and Victor Jensen. And I'm sure this time they'll see the value of ridding Florida of the thieves and murderers attracted by illegal gambling. Hmm? Sergeant. to walk a bit later. Doctor said she'll get better faster that way. But you know I'm scared. Grogan will be here with you. His old cabin of mine is so far in the Everglades, even I need him have to find it. You're going to take over Harry's job, aren't you? Well, you wouldn't want me to slap things off now, would you? I don't know. There will be lots of time here to think things out. I have to consider Steve's future. Thanks for helping me with the ladder. No one else I dare trust. Maybe that'll give you something to think about, too. Gave her another sedative. She'll be knocked out in a few minutes. Okay, Grogan, take care of him. I need him. Call. Anything happens, use the phone. It's working. I made sure. Hey, Uncle Barn, I need pencils again. The kind Captain Elkins used to send. I'll bring them. said if anything happened to Lila, you'd get your lumps. Get your hoods out of here, ass cunt. Don't you ever stop giving orders? Nope. She's alive, you idiot. 
She's okay. We want Sheridan to think she's dead. What kind of a stall are you giving me? If she's alive, where is she? Got her in a cabin in the Everglades. We're keeping her there till we want her. Won't take me long to find out if you're leveling. You bird-brained idiot. Go on, hand Sheridan what he wants on a silver platter. Play into his hands. Take things in your own hands and Lila's still liable to get killed. You're mad. Okay, so you're mad. What I read in the paper made me mad. There's a lot riding on this coming election, Scott. Maybe I'll just stay here to do some fishing, huh? Yeah. Bet your hook with these two punks. You want to fish, fish. Now stay out of my hair. Where'd you say your cabin was in the... I didn't say. You're a good cop, Scotty. I like you. In the week following the publicized death of Lila Hodges, Oliver Tubbs stepped up his campaign to form committees in every large city. He toured the state to hold secret meetings with influential men in behalf of the legal gambling bill. Where necessary, he resorted to the blackmail information contained in the files of Raymond Sheridan. Sheridan became more brazen, more sure of himself. He began to take chances. One such chance was his desire to secure the backing of Henry Tremont, a man who figured prominently in the phenomenal growth of Florida. It was a move that could have far-reaching effects on the entire election campaign. If Tremont went with Sheridan, the gambling bill was almost assured of success. And on Henry Tremont, Sheridan had dug deep to prepare the most vicious blackmail file of all. Tubbs, I've known you for more than 25 years. I've always known you'd stoop low to gain what you wanted. But I didn't think blackmail was a weapon you'd use. Oh, look, you're going off the deep end. All we want is your support, and that support will bring you a fortune. If I don't give it to you, you're ready to ruin the lives of my daughter and her husband. Well, I hope you don't make that necessary. We have nothing personal against Lois and Bill, but... Not only will I not lend my name to that bill, but I'll do everything in my power to fight. Get out. Now, look, you... Get out, Tubbs. You're just excited. Tubbs, run! So help me out. All right, Henry. I hope you realize this is a mistake on your part. Where's Oliver? Is he gone? Yes. Martha, sit down. Something wrong? It's a great deal wrong. Please sit down, honey. Tubbs knows about Bill. How did he find out? I don't know. I can't think of anyone in the world I'd rather not have find out. There's something he wants, is that right, Henry? Yes. And you don't want to give it to him? Tubbs chooses to make this public. It would mean the end of our lives here in Florida, you know that. And you're asking me to make the decision. I want you to have the choice. If you want me to string along with Tubbs, I will. Oh, darling. It seems like so much to give up. I'll get in touch with Tubbs. He can have what he wants. be only one more thing we have to live with. I don't want you to help him. How's about a drink? I'll fix them. Big, tall ones. You'd never think to throw me out. I tell you, this Tremont is a tough guy. He's got to fight us. You know what that means. Trouble. Big trouble. I should never have gone near him. Should have left well enough alone. I'll tell you something, Ray. You're overstepping yourself, and I'm the one who's being hurt by it. I'm sure the fee you're receiving will help to soothe your injured feelings. Go home, Oliver. Get a good night's rest. Henry Tremont's not going to stand in our way. How can you be so sure? 
Let's just say that I have faith in our enterprise. You know, Ray, sometimes you scare the living daylights out of me. Good afternoon, Oliver. So long. said last time I need an invitation. I've missed you. Is that enough invitation? Kiss her, will you? She hadn't had her mind on the gin game all week. I always wondered what kind of women fell for cops. Is there a special kind? For the beating they take on the money they get? Are you serious? See, so you're feeling better. Oh, she felt good enough the second day to beat. How long have I got to stay holed up in this swamp? I wish I knew. Sheridan's the one making all the progress, not us. Dubs the star of the campaign all over the state, committees in every city. If you think I'm going to stay here till election time. Get in the house. Are you crazy coming here? I thought you might like some company, Scotty boy. Okay, where is she? Come inside. Sit this one out, Admiral. We won't be long. You boys have a crap game or something. Lila, baby. I'm never going to believe what I read in the papers again. You look sharp, kid. Yeah, the swamps agree with me. Sheridan's men have been watching you like hawks ever since you came to Miami. What if they trace Lolly here through you? You know how long I've been trying to find this place. Every day for three days we've been looking. And I knew what I was looking for. Sheridan has no reason to look. I just hope you didn't give him one. Scotty boy, you worry too much. But I like a guy who plays square with me. He said Lila was alive, and she is. I just wanted to come here and make sure. If anything had happened to her, I don't... Yeah? This is Scott. Who? I'll get right back to town. What is it, Bart? Henry Tremont's been shot to death. Tremont, the big shot contract? My wife says Oliver Tubbs did it. Now, Ascot, you saw her, she's alive. You and your playmates, clear out. Rogan, you see to it. Go. Oh, this is silly, gentlemen. You know me. I wouldn't kill anybody. I'm a peace-loving man. There are other character witnesses among the top men of this state of the box room. You're accused of blackmail and murder, Tubbs. Your big shot friends can't talk you out of that. Well, you've only got the word of uh, Martha Tremont. I like her. I admire her. I've known her for many years. I don't know why she'd do a thing like this. Maybe it was the shock of Henry being killed. If you didn't do it, Tubbs, who did? Are you trying to save your own skin or trying to protect someone else's? Look, I told you, I don't know who killed him. Man was killed at Havana. 
The same gun that got him got Henry Tremont. I haven't been in Havana for 15 years. The man who killed Tremont poisoned Lila Hodges. What's Lila Hodges got to do with this? Raymond Sheridan is behind these murders. We think you're trying to do his dirty work for him. Let it sink in, Tubbs. It's either your neck or his. Chief, let's go look at those fingerprints. Yeah. Got a couple of guards outside the door. Don't get funny. Tubbs didn't do the actual killing. Uh, he wouldn't know what to do with a 357 Magnum. You sure you left the switch open? Yeah. Come on. Okay. Well, let's uh, send Sheridan and let Tubbs take the rap. That Tubbs is a fool. Strange, with all the smart deals he's pulled in this state, he'd let himself be made a patsy by someone like Sheridan. Well, if he thinks he's in trouble now, wait till he finds out Lila Hodges is still alive. Yeah. You'll tie him in so tight with Sheridan, they'll never have a chance. Yeah, and by that time, it'll be too late for Tubbs' attorneys to do anything about it. Hey, Chief, is that intercom open? Well, that ought to give him an ear for him. Let's hope it works. I'll go and release him. Well, that ought to stop his lawyers from screaming. Yeah, I'm under arrest for murder, and then you go in swimming, eh? Well, my lawyers got you out, didn't they? Yeah. Go, have a drink. No, I don't want a drink. I want to know the truth. What do you know about the death of Henry Tremont? Why, am I supposed to know something? Well, the, the police seem to think so. That's impossible. Oh, is it? Well, I heard them talking over an open intercom. They didn't know it. They think that you're responsible, and you're letting me take the blame. And do you believe that? Well, you wanted to blackmail Tremont. What else could I believe? You're a frightened little rabbit, Oliver. Well, I was in that jail and you weren't. And here's another thing I heard. Leela Hodges isn't dead. Oh, then it does mean something to you. How do you know about the Hodges woman? Just something I heard at headquarters, that's all. I want you to leave the country. What, jump bail? Well, that would be admitting that I killed Tremont. You heard me. Start running. Put a private plane at your disposal. Go to South America, get yourself lost. Yeah, but my money. You'll get your money. Look, I can't pull up stakes like that. I'm giving you your life, you moron. You and Lila Hodges are the only two who can hurt me, and she's not going to be so lucky. Get out! I never want to see your silly face in Florida again. They must have rushed her right to the hospital and pumped her up. I just don't understand how she took it. Don't get it. She must be made of iron. You can't afford another mistake, Maury. Time's run out. Lila's got to be found. Now, wait, Ray. There's something that may give us the answer to this. Hmm? I had Chuck Borden tailing Louis Ascot. Now, he told me that Louis took a little joy ride up in the Everglades. Let's face it, the Everglades are for tourists and sportsmen, and our boy Louis neither one of those. Well, get going. Check with you later. Yes, sir, gentlemen. Do something for you? Yeah, we're thinking about taking a little ride. A friend of ours told us you took him on one and it was real good. Maybe you could take us to the same place. A sure thing. But who is your friend, so I'll know. A fellow named Ascot. Louis Ascot. Yeah, I remember him, but that's not our usual run, mister. Look, we'll a hundred buy us the same trip today. For a hundred bucks, mister, I'll take you clear to Havana for that. You just go on and get aboard. I'll... I'll call the boss and tell him we're taking off. He has to send somebody else over to watch the office. Okay, Pa, get going. Good Captain Scott, please. Uh, Captain, this is Gil Muller at the boathouse. Uh, those guys are here. I didn't think it was going to happen this fast. It's going to be rough. Is your radio transmitter set up? All set. It'll pick up anything they say, all right. You better hurry up, Cap. I don't like being caught in the middle of this. Yeah, sure. I'll try to make the trip as slow as I can. Hello. 
Yeah, Bart. Oh, everything's nice and quiet around here. You jumped the gun. You're on the way out here now. How many are there? All right, Bart, we'll do the best we can. No, no, I won't let them leave the house. But Bart, look, get out of here quickly. Fine. Bad news, huh? Can either of you handle a gun? What's with the guns? I've done a little hunting with Bart. What's wrong? Sheridan's killers are on their way out here now. What? If you think I'm going to stay here and get killed, you're crazy. Let me out! Get out of here! Let me out! You stop Come on! I'm going to get killed! Let me go! Let me go! Bart, just give me orders if nobody's to go to those trees. The place is full of quicksand. You wouldn't last a hundred yards. Now, shut up! Be quiet! Sit down. <laughs> Expected to work out this way, but headquarters set up a trap to, try to bring Sheridan's killers out of the open. The trap was sprung too fast. Now the police are going to try to get here first. They may not make it. So now you know what's happening. Here's a gun for you. Eh? Steve, you my pal. Yes. And a boy. And when these men get here, I want you to lie down on the floor, and make like a carpet. Don't even lift that little head of yours, okay? Okay, I won't. Atta boy. There's a gun for you. I never shot one in my life. Maybe this will be your day to learn, baby. Even if you can't hit him, just keep firing and keep him ducking for cover. Stevie, I don't want you to be frightened. Frightened? Mother, this is terrific. Wait till the other kids hear how we lick those crooks. How about that? He's making us report to headquarters already. And a boy. to get lost. They can shoot through to this place. You guys never been through here before? No, and after today, I don't think we'll ever have to go through it again. A guy can sure how this guy back to came without his wife ever finding out about it. Maybe that's what our friend Louis Ascot did. Good. That's why he wasn't so anxious to let his pals know about his little boat trip. told me about the land around here, they'd never make it. Well, maybe they'll get lucky, maybe they will make it. We'll be sitting here like a bunch of rats in a trap. They could shoot through that window so fast we wouldn't even... Shoot their heels. <laughs> Either you have no guts or no brains, which I don't know, but that's a kid over there. Do you understand a kid? And he has to rely on us, all of us. <laughs> What's well, a good thing he's not yours? I better go outside so I can hear what's coming. What's he picking on me for? I didn't ask to be made a pigeon. It's his responsibility to see that nothing happens to you. Suppose you had to worry about somebody else's life. You're going to make me feel like a two-bit heel, too? Oh, no, that wouldn't be you. You're the kind of a girl that goes to church on Sunday and wishes every day was Christmas. And you've never felt that way. Christmas is for people who get presents. I never got anything I didn't earn. Lila, we all came here to help you. We didn't have to. And you, shut up! What's a two-bit heel? <laughs> Are you kidding? I don't 
you what that was before I could walk. Maybe that's the trouble. Sure, why not? Will's full of them. My father was one, the first guy I ever loved was one, and the schmo I married was one. But that's the first time anybody ever called me one. Brogan's made mistakes before. Want some coffee? How can you be so calm? It's even worse for you with a kid. I know the police will do everything they can. I thought you didn't think too much of cops. That seems to be my fate, Lila. I think a little too much of them. Really overboard for that Scott guy. Yes. Well, it's times like these it would be sure good to hear the patter of size 13s around the house. Well, Scott's okay. He could have made a pass at me in Havana, but no. He was strictly business. All cop. Maybe you shouldn't try and make him anything else. Marry him, kid, then you got it made. Sitting around remembering you're a widow is liable to wind you up at Section 8. That is, if we ever get out of this wing, Dean. Well, I want you to be right. How's about me telling you some stories? You know some good ones? Oh, beauts. Hey, come on. Let's start off when I was a kid, hoping for the USO in Luzon. Okay. You've been riding around these swamps for hours. What are you trying to do? Make a career out of this? Look, I'm responsible for you, man. You go too fast in here and you stand a good chance of ripping out your bottom. Skipper, Louis Ascot went in here for a reason. I paid you a hundred bucks to find out what that reason is. Wait, friend, I... I don't I... want any conversation out of you. I just want you to get us where we're going before it's dark. Otherwise, you might not make that return trip. Look, I didn't hire after... I suppose you just make this crate go a little faster. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sheridan's getting impatient. Now this time, we don't make any mistake with that Hodges woman. That's it. That's a tie with Sheridan. Stupid now and grab that 38 over there. Right. What's come over her?
Dutch cop! Darren! Darren! How do you like that? Always kissing. I guess that's it. Lila's identification of Mari Pell. Pell's testimony should put the rest of them where they belong. Oh, I am sorry he's dead. I'd like to have seen him come to trial. Might have served as a better warning to some of these other guys with big ideas. Florida would have been like with legal gambling. 